Every year, people miss the opportunity to potentially save thousands on their taxes. And it's not Roth conversions, it's not getting more deductions or even tax loss harvesting. It costs nothing, but you just have to be aware of it. So that's what the purpose of this video is about. It's just to make sure, give you the awareness and give you a real example in a scenario of how much of an impact this can have and how much you pay in taxes each year. So here is the story about Jack and Diane. So they're all grown up and they're retired. They've got all these different accounts and they recently heard about the importance of proper retirement withdrawal strategy because they saw a report from Vanguard that said doing a withdrawal strategy that's tailored to them can add 1% per year in added return, which we found to be true at Streamline Financial. That's the, by the way, if I haven't met you, I'm Dave Zoller and I own Streamline Financial. It's a retirement planning firm and I own it with Tim and Luke and Sean. So let's look at the details for Jack and Diane. They have social security of 4,500 per month, or that's 54,000 per year. And then how much they need each month for expenses is 7,000 per month, or that's equivalent to 84,000 per year. So at first glance, retirement income looks like it's no problem for them, right? The, the gap is only $30,000. I shouldn't say only, but it's $30,000. And with their savings and their investments that they've got, taking that out each year should be no problem. They don't, they're not worrying about running out of money. They're like many of our clients at Streamline Financial, but they still see the value of optimizing the tax side and the investment picture. And they want to know, is it really true that they can save 1% per year of their liquid net worth, that 1.6 million, if they're doing a focused and uh, a tactical withdrawal strategy? The original plan was to use just the bank cash the first few years of with of retirement. That's actually why they built up that cash reserve. And one of their dreams though, is to spend more time in the summertime with their daughter and son-in-law and then their new, soon to, to be born, new baby, a granddaughter. It's their first granddaughter and they wanna take annual family vacations. So that 84,000 was what they want every year, but they're gonna be adding on top of that for expenses to take these big vacations but they know how difficult it is to travel with a newborn or to travel when, when you're uh, due soon. So they're going to start that in a few years. So now let's take a look at their scenario and look at the strategy to see if we can apply it and save them thousands of dollars just the first year alone. So this is their picture. And I'll explain each section here. We've got taxable interest. That taxable interest is coming from the bank account each year. And then we also have qualified dividends. The qualified dividends are coming from that trust account that uh, is also on the sheet right here. And then they also have, scroll down a little bit, that social security of 54,000 per year. So 54,000 plus eight plus four is $66,000 of income. So what's left is $18,000 from the bank that they need to take out. And here's what that picture looks like. So total income is just that 8,000 plus 4,000 plus total taxable social security, which is 3,500. Now, you may have heard of how social security is only partially taxed depending on your income, provisional income. Let me show you a quick snapshot of what that looks like. So this is the provisional income threshold for married filing joint. And if you make less than 32,000, provisional income is less than 32,000, then none of taxable, taxable social security is uh is taxed now for them they're going to be in between this number for the current scenario and then anything more than forty four thousand, then 85 the max is 85 uh, 85 percent of social security can be taxed so for this scenario 3500 is taxed and their deductions this is just standard deductions they're not itemizing their standard deductions are thirty two thousand. so their taxable income is zero their total tax is zero as well now the very important thing that they were not thinking about was they've got room to recognize more income on purpose and still pay zero tax. So there's two main things that people think about. There's a, there's a few more, but the two big ones are Roth conversions and then tax gain harvesting. So I mentioned that it's we're not focusing on Roth conversions, but we're focusing on this other one that isn't used as often. It's We've heard of tax loss harvesting, where we write off the losses each year and, and get benefit for that. But what about tax gain harvesting for this scenario. It comes into play in retirement for a lot of people. And here's why. 
I'll actually show both examples, uh, first tax gain harvesting and then Roth conversions for Jack and Diane. But before I get into that, do you like this sort of video where we're looking at the specific scenarios and looking at the planning software? If you do, give this a like and, and maybe a comment, and then I'll know that, and then I'll do more of these in the future. So Jack and Diane, they chose to do tax gain harvesting because in their trust account here, they bought an individual stock a few years ago, and that stock is up over 100%. So it was around 30 a little over 31,000 is what they bought it for. And now the value is 60K. So it did well. Value is 60K. Cost basis, what they bought it for is $31,000. So the gain is $29,000. The only problem with this stock is that it's highly volatile. One year it was up 30%, and then a few months later it was down 30%. And it's just, something they're thinking they maybe don't want to hold in their portfolio as they get into retirement because it's taking up 15% of their total allocation for that trust account, which is pretty significant. And it could sway the, the direction of the trust in, in a pretty big way. And if you're anything like Jack and Diane, or if you're anything like our clients in retirement, you might be more comfortable investing for more predictability or more sustainability versus trying to shoot the lights out and, and uh, invest in a stock that's going to you know, double or go up 100%. Because for Jack and Diane, they already crossed the finish line, right? They just have to focus on not losing it now and not making bad decisions. It's really all about optimizing their retirement. So let's take a look at if they sold that $60,000, what sort of impact does that have on their portfolio? So everything stays the same, 4,000, 8,000, Social Security stays the same here. And then they sell and their long-term capital gains is now $29,000. This was a surprise. Total tax, $0. So even here, recognizing that $29,000 extra in long-term capital gains, their taxable social security went up, which makes sense. Total income went up, deductions stay the same, and their taxable income is actually more than their deductions. So why are they paying no tax? Well, the reason is because of the preferential treatment for long-term capital gains. The tax rate on long-term capital gains is less than what ordinary income tax rates is. So they're in the 10% bracket. They're paying 0% tax on the long-term capital gains. That's tax gain harvesting. So the balance, the thing to pay attention to is the balance between taxable social security and total income and also the qualified versus ordinary interest or dividends here in the gain. So that's really a, a balancing act and doing these projections is how you get there. But now what if they wanted to do something uh, not, let's pretend they didn't have that, that big uh, gainer stock in their trust account and they wanted to do Roth conversions instead. Well, let's go back into the scenario and take a look at, uh, at the new picture. And then we'll do a quick comparison between the two. So all the same, we're going to say, okay, not doing the, the long-term gain, not recognizing that, but what we're doing is Roth conversions. We'll do the same amount. We'll say that Jack does it for $29,000. Same dollar amount. Now, look at this. Everything is the same. Total income, deductions, taxable income, even total taxable Social Security and ordinary dividends, but there is one difference. Here's the previous. Same. Here's the new one doing the Roth conversion. And we can see there's a difference here. 12% marginal tax bracket instead of the 10% when we did the long-term capital gains. So why is that? It's all the same dollar amounts. It's because the treatment of ordinary income or the treatment of Roth conversions is treated as ordinary income and taxed at that rate, not taxed at the preferential tax rates of the long-term capital gains. So it could still make sense to do Roth conversions, but you want to make sure you're looking at the picture for them specifically, they could do a tax-free Roth conversion or pay no extra tax, but they'd have to lower the conversion amount down to 14,000. And because they've got that stock that they wanted to allocate better to the trust so that it's more predictable, it made sense to do tax gain harvesting. So I'd love to know from you, was that useful to see scenarios like that? I, I hope it was. I'm planning to record more of those types of scenarios and show them on this channel. So subscribe 
so that you don't miss those. And then check out this video on how the wealthy are investing their money this year. And then I'll see you in the next video. Take care.